You travel the world, yeah. you eat whatever you want, you get drunk, and you have fun, and then you go to the next place. Yeah. <laughs> how, do you, how do you land a gig like that? I, I just, I, I wrote an obnoxious book, and, um, and that somehow turned into a TV show, and I started traveling, and I uh, never looked back. Before Anthony Bourdain would become a television star with shows like A Cook's Tour, The Layover, No Reservations, and CNN's Parts Unknown, which would earn four consecutive primetime Emmys. So here's the conundrum with the Chicago-style dog. All the things that make it good to eat also make it hard to kind of hold together. Ooh. Case in point. Before Anthony Bourdain would release several works of literature, including a comic book series, and his bestsellers, Medium Raw and Kitchen Confidential, the later of which would be turned into a short lived sitcom starring Bradley Cooper. He's sure he's famous. If you're a chef, he's like the Rolling Stones. Before Anthony would eat everything from a bull's penis to maggot fried rice, fetal duck eggs, sheep testicles, a raw seal eyeball, a live cobra, but would still call a chicken McNugget the worst thing he's ever ate. Before Anthony would publicly criticize his fellow celebrity chefs including Paula Deen, Bobby Flay, Guy Fieri, Sandra Lee, Rachel Ray, but have the utmost respect for Gordon Ramsay. There are a few times in your life when you know you're about to have a great time, you're about to have a great meal. And the fearsome, the terrifying, the awesome Gordon Ramsay's restaurant. Coined the original rock star of the culinary world, Anthony Bourdain paved the way for the likes of Gordon Ramsay and Jamie Oliver, the later of whom was still in diapers when Anthony graduated from the finest and most expensive culinary school in all of America. From there, he got his start in New York kitchens as a dishwasher, and money was tight. But that didn't mean Anthony didn't partake in many vices, including an addiction to heroin, alcohol, and cocaine. After rising to the ranks of executive chef, well, Anthony's personal life was still in shambles, and then he took an unexpected left turn into becoming an author. Well, this is the move that would transform his life. And through it all, it was Anthony's honesty, not only with the culinary arts, but also his personal demons, that gave him such mass appeal. The man would even often joke about his own luck and still being alive. I should have died in my 20s, I became successful in my 40s. What's going on guys, it's your boy Michael McCrudden with a Before They Were Gone video, this one on the much loved Anthony Bourdain. Now this was the second celebrity suicide this week, the other being Kate Spade. Now a lot of personalities have been promoting suicide hotlines which is fantastic and a really strong way of showing support, but I think I'm going to do something a little different. My cell phone it was leaked this week by one of you guys. And it's been posted online. I've been getting a lot of phone calls. So I'm actually going to uh, allow you guys to go and leave me a voicemail. As long as it's thoughtful and respectful, I'll get back to a few of you. I know everyone needs a friend, and uh, well, maybe I can lift a few people's spirits. All right, now let's get into this video. I'm not even joking. Anthony Bourdain was born on June 25th, 1956 in New York City to Pierre Bourdain, a Columbia Records executive and Gladys Saxman, a New York Times staff editor. Now his father was French and of some Spanish ancestry and his mother was of Ukrainian, Jewish and Austrian descent. Now Anthony, he grew up with a younger brother named Christopher and as a child living in New Jersey, he stated, I speak on behalf of every child that ever grew up there in saying that your purpose in life was looking across the bay to New York City and figuring out a way to end up there. While vacationing on the coast of France with his parents as a young boy, a local fisherman offered him an oyster fresh from the sea and he ate it, and he forever identified this as the moment as what he wanted to do with the rest of his life. It is also eerie that this eureka moment, well it took place in the exact same place where this story ends. He attended the Inglewood School for Boys in New Jersey, and then he attended Vassar College, but he was still holding on to his childhood dream and working at a seafood restaurant. After two years at Vassar, he decided to drop out, and this was in the early 70s. He finally decided to pursue what he loved and got enrolled at the Culinary Institute of America. Yeah, this is the most expensive and prestigious culinary school in the country. Anthony graduated in 1978 and worked his way through the New York City restaurant business for 20 years. He began his career in the food industry as a dishwasher, likely making around 12 bucks an hour. He also married his high school sweetheart, Nancy Putkowski, in 1985. Now, eventually, he did move his way up into food preparation, then to line cook, then sous chef, and to chef. And in these early years, he certainly wasn't making a lot of money, but him and his kitchen staff, they certainly knew how to spend some cash on drugs and alcohol. Speaking on this, Anthony revealed, I was a heroin addict for sure and I was a cocaine addict. I think my last years working in the restaurant industry, I was definitely drinking too much. 
because alcohol was around me all the times and you were under tremendous stress. He got off heroin in the 80s but sadly some of his friends weren't so lucky and as the years progressed, well, he began cutting his vices. Now it was in 1998 that he landed the prestigious title of executive chef at New York City's Brasserie Le Hales. I'm totally butchering that, I don't speak French. But here, this is what the restaurant looks like. I think we can turn the food out faster than they can turn the tables. Still, Anthony hadn't pieced his personal life together. He didn't consider himself a success. He stated at the age of 44, I was standing in kitchens, not knowing what it was like to go to sleep without being in mortal terror. I was in a horrible, endless, irrevocable debt. I had no health insurance. I didn't pay my taxes. I couldn't pay my rent. It was a nightmare. It was during his time as an executive chef that he wrote an essay for The New Yorker titled Don't Eat Here Before Reading This. And he really pulled back the veil on the realities of what's going on in the kitchens of even some of the world's most high end establishments. It read, I came into the business when cooks still smoked on the line and wore headbands. A few years ago, I wasn't surprised to hear rumors of a study of the nation's prison population, which reportedly found that the leading civilian occupation among inmates before they were put behind bars was cook. As most of us in the restaurant business know, there is a powerful strain on criminality in the industry, ranging from the dope dealing busboy with a beeper and a cell phone to the restaurant owner who has two sets of accounting books. There were plenty more revelations. He told the world that Tuesday is the best day for food, as the chef has likely rested taking off Monday and has all the freshly delivered goods. He also gives a good reason never to order a steak well done and that the kitchen can get so rowdy he's seen his fair share of plates thrown, noses bitten and bar brawl behavior, all while serving up lavish meals. Now the article became a very popular read not just by cooks, but everyone in the city that never sleeps, and it spread around the world. Remarkably, Anthony had found a second calling as an author. It was around the year 2000 that he released his first book, titled Kitchen Confidential Adventures in the Culinary Underbelly. And this time, he certainly held nothing back, speaking about his own prevalent use of drugs and in kitchens all over the world. We were high all the time, sneaking off to the walk-in refrigerator at every opportunity to conceptualize. Hardly a decision was made without drugs. Cannabis, meth, cocaine, LSD, mushrooms, and honey and used to sweeten tea, and increasingly, heroin. His scandalizing book quickly became a New York Times bestseller and exposed the underside of the restaurant industry. Now, Looking back on this candid reveal, he stated, I just didn't give a shit at all what people might think. I don't think anyone was going to read it, so what did it matter? I just told the truth on every page with every sentence, and I'm glad I did. Now, Anthony certainly took a risk and he could have been shunned by everyone in the industry, but instead he became an ambassador and all of a sudden he was getting offers to host television shows. From 2002 to 2003, he led the Food Network's A Cook's Tour, on which he traveled to exotic locales to try the cuisine. Over 2,600 tons of fish is sold here daily. That's a big tuna sandwich. But just as his career was taking off, his first marriage would fall apart. Two years later, he would meet Octavia Boussier in 2007, with whom he welcomed a daughter. Now, this encouraged him to quit smoking, having been accustomed to smoking two packs a day prior. His next television venture was Travel Channel's No Reservations, that often featured his famous foodie friends, including the likes of Bill Murray, Kevin Durant, Alice Cooper, and many others. Also, a shit ton of chefs. Now, that show ended in 2012, and then he started The Layover, also on the Travel Channel. And this series did take a toll on Anthony, as the purpose of the show was for him to take in as much as he could in any given city in 24 to 48 hours. Now, speaking on his time as a television host and as an author, Anthony revealed this. There is an element of shame because it's so easy. I can't believe that people give me money for this shit. It's not work. At the end of the day, the TV show is the best job in the world. I get to go anywhere I want, eat and drink whatever I want. As long as just babble at the camera, other people will pay for it. It's a gift. His most recent and popular show, Anthony Bourdain, Parts Unknown, started in 2013 and quickly became one of CNN's biggest draws. The show earned four consecutive Primetime Emmy Awards from 2013 to 2016, and in 2016, well, Anthony, he and his second wife, they would divorce. In 2017, he began dating actress Asia Argento, and she had her own sexual misconduct encounter with Harvey Weinstein, and she went public with it this year. Now, Anthony, he was in France filming for CNN's Parts Unknown, when he was found dead in his hotel room, and the cause of death was suicide by hanging. 
Through his TV shows and books, he explored the human condition and helped audiences think differently about food and travel and even themselves. Within hours, friends, colleagues and admirers, they took to social media to share their fond memories of the celebrity chef. Here is what Gordon Ramsay had to say. Stunned and saddened by the loss of Anthony Bourdain, he brought the world into our homes and inspired so many people to explore cultures and cities through their food. Remember that help is a phone call away? US 1-800-273-TALK or in the UK 116-123. Those suicide hotlines are an absolute pillar of our community and something that you should definitely look into if you find yourself in, in any kind of uh, you know, downward spiral. I'm going to take things a little step further and I'm really uh, offering you guys a bit of my time if you are going through a real hardship. Um, my number has been leaked, it's online if you can find it. And uh, you know, no prank calls, honest and heartfelt voicemails and I'll get back to you. My name is Michael Bucrat and this is Before They Were Gone. Please leave your uh, well wishes and condolences for the departed in the comments down below and I'll see you guys in another video.